Thank you. 101.9 Kink.fm, the Bing Lounge. Oh, the memories are, are flowing here this <laughs> uh, this morning. John Kuntz, Johnny and the Distractions with us. It's good to see you guys again. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> it's good to be anywhere, right? <laughs> it is. I was good just, to be seen. I was just looking out at the uh, audience and thinking that most of this audience is probably having some roar and memories right now. <laughs> some good times in the 80s. Was uh, Is this true that your original band was the Wasted Rangers? Well, um, yeah, there's a little <laughs> side story there. Really, it wasn't my band. Uh, I didn't have a band, but I'd written all these songs that later became distraction songs and these guys had a rockin like what would now be called an alt country band right they Very were called old. the wasted rangers they'd been up and running for several years they were real tight and they were my buddies and ron had a house with a studio in the basement and so we recorded our all of my first demos in his basement with these guys playing on it and i would actually go to their gigs once in a while and come out and do a set in the middle of their gig them backing me up and me doing these <laughs> kind of rocking songs in the middle of their and it caused anything from a confusion and extreme anger to uh, i don't know some people liked it but it, it, there's some interesting stories there both sides yeah you guys are so tight, and you know, I, I'm sorry that I wasn't around to hear you when you were in your heyday, but I think what separates you or the Eagles or Springsteen? I mean, you're a good band. No, seriously, what things, what maybe, choices, yeah. what happens to separate you? Um, well, there's a lot of things. There's large bank accounts, of course, but uh, <laughs> it, it's, you, you know, yeah, the distractions later went on and got signed by a and Records and I put a, an album out called Let It Rock in 1982. And it hit radio, and it did real well. Uh, we didn't have a hit. You know, we toured, and uh, when our season was up, we came back home and went back to being a bar band. And so, uh, you know, that's the business. That's the way it is. We did have a good uh, run there out on the road in a tour bus, you know, opening for Jay Giles and Asia and Tom Petty, Joan Jett, and so forth and well, so Was on. that experience everything you dreamed of when you were, you know, coming up thinking, I would love to do that? Oh, it was, it was great. I mean, you know, being on a tour bus rolling around the continental United States uh, seven days a week, you're just traveling, you know, playing six days and the seventh day is usually drive day, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly you don't see much of the towns. You see the back end of a municipal sporting arena, you know, because <laughs> you're the opening act for a band that has a hit record. So, you know, there's 10, 15,000 people coming to see the headliner. You're trying to win some, you know, folks over the first 40 minutes, you know. So it was, uh, com compare playing music today in Portland to the way it was back then. Um, well, you know, th there's some things that are the same and, you know, some stuff that's different. Instead of big, huge hooch parlors, you know, where there's maybe 800 people, there's a lot less of those. There used to be like uh, six or eight of those running. Now there's a lot of smaller little pubs, but Bill, Bill, you play around doing solo gigs and stuff. I mean, you know. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's different than it used to be for sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. Could well, someone tell lot, me what a, a hooch parlor is first, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, hooch is uh, as in alcohol. Oh. All right. Drinking establishments? <laughs> Drinking establishments. I'm sorry. I... Establish moan, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say it's different now. There's a lot more. Um, as good or as bad? Better or worse? Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's that, you know, I don't think you can really look at it that way. As better or worse. I think everything has its day. And uh, I'm just, you know, when I'm out playing now, doing a lot of solo acoustic things and selling my CDs, you know, out of the trunk of my car and on my website. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I really like that. Uh, so, so for someone listening right now, uh, thinking this is what I'd like to do, uh, some up-and-comer, it's possible to stay here in Portland and make a living making music? Um, you, in this city, you can probably make a, a, a meager uh, <laughs> means out of it a lot better than in a lot of other cities around the, the yeah. U.S., for yeah. sure. That's it's good. tougher yeah. in other towns. The street here is a lot kinder. <laughs> you know, on the street in Seattle and on the street in Portland are two different things. I mean, yeah. yeah, or Los Angeles. Yeah, it's a kinder, gentler town here. For sure. Well, you guys are playing for the Oregon Music Hall of Fame fifth celebration uh, this Saturday. And I'm really curious about your own thoughts about music education, because that's what all the proceeds are going for. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing and what, what are your thoughts about the cuts to music education in the public schools? Well, 
you know, that's the reason we're doing it is, is because it's a great cause. And I think the, that providing scholarships, you know, somebody's got to take up the slack somewhere uh, when, you know, maybe uh, government or uh, municipalities can no longer fund everything for the public. I think it's great that uh, there's an organization of people and the Hall of Fame. Nobody's taking a salary. You know, part of their administrative fee is not uh, lying in anybody's pockets. You know, it's just paper clips and a filing cabinet or whatever, that kind of stuff, you know. So it's not one of those deals where a bunch of guys are making a living off of it. it it's really an honest to God, real deal charity, you know. And uh, I think it's a great cause. And Bill's, uh, you, you, we were talking about that on the way yeah. down here. Well, it's really, you know, it's horrible that the, all of the arts have kind of slipped. You know, it's the first thing they, they cut. And it really stinks. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Because, uh, you know, if it hadn't been for, like, theater and, you know, high school for me, I, you know, I wouldn't have stayed. <laughs> it was a place of... But it's just that there's nothing there. And if uh, they've been making some effort to go out there and not only the scholarship, but the music in the schools programs, blues in schools, you actually get to see working musicians come out. And the kids really like that because, I mean, it's a real person. It's not somebody in a clown costume, you know. Watch Mr. Fizzles play the C clarinet. <laughs> you know, um, you, you got, you know, you have real people. I mean, real people, and who are usually, you know, tired from the gig the night before. And the kids, you know, kids, they know real. I mean, if you're a phony, a bunch of primary school kids will eat you alive. <laughs> they will just tough crowd, tough crowd. spit you out. Kindergartners are even the worst. Man. I've done a couple. I've done a couple of those things. Gone out and done the elementary school, and I, those were some of the well, most fun gigs I've ever had. When the they kids love you, are it's great. Just great. Yeah. They're just like so into it, and they asking so many questions and stuff. No, I, I think that program's fabulous. I, that's just couldn't get enough of it. And that's what it's all about Saturday night. Newmark Theater this year. It's going to be a very good show. It's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, the uh, concert and induction ceremonies. Johnny and the Distractions will find their way into the uh, the Oregon Hall of Fame, the Music Hall of Fame. Said Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but Oregon Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, as well as our own Bob and Chet. A big round of applause for all these guys. Hey, Bob. Keep it going for the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Uh, doors open at 6 this Saturday. The show starts at 7, and there's a big auction that happens during the show. Uh, lots of collectible guitars and things that you can bid on, and all the proceeds go to music education, which is a great cause. One more time, let's hear it. Johnny and the Distractions into Bing. Thanks, guys.